Okay, we are making a video about the basic music theory of non-commutative phase. And so here we have the music notation of the do a dear scale. This is the diatonic scale and I have I'm trying to track down the source where I originally got this photo. But this is the F as the undertone so therefore it is a perfect fifth as two-thirds and the reason there's an X there is because this is before it's been turned into the logarithmic equal tempered Western scale so the X is the one as the um, root tonic and then it gets doubled up to the F as a perfect fourth, which is four thirds. But the reason it has to be an X is because this four thirds was originally generated from a different root, root tonic than the C. It was generated from um, using the F as the new root tonic um, from Philolaus flipping his lyre around so that the C as the lower note would no longer be closest to him as he plucked his lyre instrument but rather the octave C or 2 to 1 X would be the closest to him or a string that's half the length because the frequency is inverse to the wavelength. And these are the frequencies. So you have a frequency of two thirds and the original has to be X. So now we will go to a, that's the visual scale. And now we'll go to a paradox that was discovered by Hemholtz in the 1800s. If you have a continuous tone and you listen to it and then you phase shift it, you can see here that visually these are different um, amplitude. This is a four year analysis of the amplitude and time with the phase shift. And they're not giving you the frequency because um, frequency and time are, are called Fourier uncertainty so that you cannot directly compare frequency with time unless you uh, convert them one to the other and that, that's based on the uh, inherent symmetric definition of the frequency that originated from the music scale being converted into um, logarithms as a symmetric geometry. So here we have a paradox because if you look at the amplitudes they are totally different due to this phase shift and yet if we read the quote for this it says that um, we will hear the same it says let us let us draw up a fundamental vibration with its first and second harmonic overtones. So that's the octave and the perfect fifth. And then if we then shift the phase, we get a totally different course of the combined curve, that is of the pressure curve, which is apparently effective in the final analysis. When looking at both curves, one might suppose that in the, the two um, cases we should hear two sounds that are just as different but in fact our ear does not notice any difference and so this is from the book Magic of the Senses um, a biophysics book so going back to the image now the question is well why doesn't the ear hear a difference and this is where it gets interesting because if we look at the actual overtone this is based on the overtones so if we look at the actual overtone series and then go examine that image again we'll see that what we're looking at are these 
these first um, the fundamental note of the harmonic series is the one and the um, second is the uh, the um, perfect fifth and then the octave is the fourth harmonic but it's the third overtone so that's what what has to be kept in mind here crucially is the difference between the overtone and uh, so the and the, the harmonic so then so now we go back to the um, the image so we have here if we look back at those this was the this was the um, first note and so it's it's just called one, even though the the first um, fundamental would just be like no sine wave at all, it would just be like just that one loop as the um, first note. As it, but it's actually the second wavelength. You see, because it's the um, so it's it's the so that enables the sine wave to be the the first note as one and then this this is the 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 uh, perfect fifth and then this is the octave which has twice as many um sine waves as the as the first note so it's a two to one frequency and then it's a one half of the wavelength and so the root tonic is just what we listen to as the overtone, so that's why it's just a one sine wave, as again, that's shown here. So it's just this fundamental here. They call it a two as a wavelength because it's actually um, like the undertone as a double octave. This is what's called the... the um, greater octave system in the by the ancient Greeks is that they had to use a double octave to establish the um, overtone series and so then um, so then they're phase shifting the um, they're phase shifting the perfect fifth here which is the darker middle line here with the three sine waves and so they phase shift it over um, so that it the the amplitude see the amplitude here is it's adding together right so that means that the overtones are also adding together so that means that this perfect fifth is the is the C to G because G is a natural overtone of the C as the root tonic. So if we go back to our images again, or this, these are the images. So I click back. So, the, so here we have, we have G as three halves over X. So because two is in the denominator, that means that it is a natural overtone of the one because the, the fundamental note is the one as the root tonic. And so any natural overtone has to have a two or a, an octave equivalent in pitch as the um, denominator. And that's why, f that's why four thirds is called the phantom tonic because it has three in the denominator and therefore it's never a natural overtone of the of the root tonic here and that's why it has to be derived from the double octave as a two-thirds undertone okay so now we go back to the image where is it um okay so so i just established this is three halves because the overtones are in phase together and so that's c to g and so we hear it as a perfect fifth and it creates a larger amplitude because of the phase uh, is in synchrony and so the amplitude increases 
Now, when we shift it to the, when we phase shift it, then what happens is the perfect fourth is not an overtone of the, of the root tonic, this one. And so we get a phase cancelization of the root tonic. And what that does is it establishes the perfect fourth as a new uh, root tonic, as the new one. And the reason why is because now the octave is in um, is a perfect fifth to the um, to the the F as a uh, the C that what was previously the root tonic is now a three over two um, perfect fifth to the F, and so the ear still hears a perfect fifth. And the reason being is because you're doing a continuous tone and you're phase shifting the um, perfect fifth to the root tonic relationship. And therefore, even though visually they look completely different, um, harmonically the pitch is still heard as a perfect fifth, but now the, um, the root tonic is, is shifted back to the the what was the perfect fifth and, and it's, it's it remains a perfect fifth even though it's the perfect fourth shifted to the original uh, fundamental uh, root tonic so that's why the ear doesn't hear the difference unless you have the scale where you're trying to play a diatonic scale and you put all the 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 intervals together and therefore you um you have, that's why if you have a scale where you're establishing an octave equivalency, where you're trying to say, okay, we're going to play notes that are just within this octave of X and 2 over X that are lined up symmetrically, then the perfect fourth now has to be established from a perfect fifth going the opposite direction because, again, the perfect fourth is not in the same um root tonic as the overtone series and so therefore the overtone series originates as a double octave um, with this this phase shift inherent in it and that's the secret of the uh, non-commutative phase and why the um, ear does not hear any difference so one might suppose that in the two um, cases we should hear two sounds that are just as different, but in fact our ear does not notice any difference. So what what happened is that they did this study for um, the time frequency uncertainty or Fourier uncertainty, and they discovered that humans can hear uh, up to ten times faster then the shift between frequency and time. So I just told you that this is actually amplitude and time as phase because of Fourier uncertainty. So the it's proven that the humans can humans can hear uh, faster than technology can shift from time to frequency as a linear uh, operator phase shift that has to be a symmetric phase shift due to this original definition of symmetry from the from the music scale um, originally. So because we defined frequency and time as a symmetric of the octave, therefore we created Fourier uncertainty in science. And this time frequency or Fourier uncertainty, then it goes, it's used even in quantum physics. And so in, in quantum biology, we can actually hear um, faster than the time frequency uncertainty that resonates all the way to the sub-angstrom level because it's, it's proven that we can hear um, a, a amplitude, a pressure wave that is at the sub-angstrom level, with, which means a wavelength smaller than light. So then we are creating a quantum phase coherence that then is able to amplify up into the the uh, hearing range of frequency due to the phase shift 
of the um, frequency of the time with the amplitude um, via this non-commutative secret of what in Taoism it's called the single perfect yang because yang is the the three halves uh, perfect fifth ratio so the yin as the perfect fourth is converted back into the single perfect fifth as the yang due to this yin yang secret of the double octave with the um, the one as uh, a new a new root tonic is created from the perfect fifth as a undertone to the octave as the previous root tonic and because the the previous root tonic is now a perfect fifth of the previous perfect fifth so it's a um the what what was the perfect fourth or yin to the original root tonic causes the original root tonic to now be the perfect fifth to the um to the octave and so you can see that here right here this is the same um uh perfect fifth to the octave over here but in relation to the original note it is amplified because the perfect fifth is the natural overtone of this um, fundamental note and so the um, so the the phase shift continues whereas here it cancels out the original you can see there's phase cancelization against the original uh, note and that's why the original um, perfect fifth is now a in relation only to the octave and not the root tonic so that's um, all I'm gonna say and and what they what they found is that if you listen to the um, highest pitch you can hear the highest frequency and you convert it you're converting that into um, a phase difference of pitch then the the original uh, frequency will shift it'll shift by a perfect fifth and that's how the ear is able to hear um, faster than the time frequency uncertainty shift uh, shown here um, so there's a there's a natural pitch shift due to the the non commutative phase that is that is faster than uh, it's up to ten times faster than what science is able to do with technology because technology has to use a, a linear operator to shift the time and the frequency and that's what the cause of the uh, measurement problem in uh, quantum physics as well it's, it's an inherent uh, time frequency as an external visual measurement as we are seeing here these are these measurements are different but when we listen to them they're the same and that again that's this called the single perfect yang or yang in uh, in Taoism and so the the root tonic is not a physical wavelength but it's just time as an energy, as frequency, as an infinite spiral of fifths, uh, creating an energy uh, transduction. So that's all I'm going to say. That's just the basic music theory secret. And I call this the Hempel effect, that, that explaining this image and why that is possible. Uh, thanks.